Hi guys, um, Bob here again for the guitar show, uh, again without Ramon while we're in lockdown. I uh, hope we can change that pretty soon. Um, this is a quick video, a supplementary to two videos that I've done recently. Uh, the first one was with Ramon uh, on uh, my digital preamps, um, the uh, Axe FX and the Kemper. And the second one was the one I popped up last week about uh, this chap here, the Hotone X-Stomp. Um, I've had an exchange with Hotone about the issues that I described in the video, uh, which has actually been really interesting, and it's sort of opened my eyes, it's taken the scales from my eyes about certain things digital, which, stupid me, I should have realised before. And this video really is about uh, two related things. It's, it's first of all about analogue versus digital, and secondly, it's about the inbuilt obsolescence of things. Because the exchange with Hotone was fascinating. They pointed out that the pedal that I'm using here is a seven-year-old design. Some of the models they're uploading today are designed to work on their more recent stuff, like I think they've got a multi-effects pedal called an Ampera, and not just the Hotone X-Stomp. My reaction was, well, first of all, it's all very good apologising for an out-of-date product, but it's still being sold in the shops, new, it's still being marketed, so it's not as if I'm using a second-hand item at my own risk. That's the first thing. Second thing is that the model was uploaded onto the X-Stomp's dedicated microsite, from which you can only load X-Stomp models. So there will be a separate microsite for this Ampera, or whatever that product is called. So, in the sense that the model was a bit flawed, it shouldn't have been there. What was more interesting was something that reinforced a view I've been coming to for some time, with the help of some of my app designer friends, which is that these new devices, digital devices, are very good at doing spacious, walk-in, glistening, gleamy clean sounds. They're wonderful at adding lush choruses and vibratos and textures and ambiences. They're pretty good on delays. Um, they're pretty good on reverbs. So they're fantastic for clean stuff. They're also really good for the new guitar sound, the very dense, compressed, overdriven on overdriven on overdriven thick sounds, very often seven and eight string, really good sort of full bandwidth, heavy distortion sounds. So hence my previous comments about they're absolutely bloody marvellous for new metal. Where I've always felt that they've let me down in the many thousands of pounds I've spent and the many months I've spent fiddling with them is on those in-between sounds, those sounds on the edge of breakup, which is most, where most rock music and where most blues music, which is what I play, comes from. So, Hotone's response was fascinating because what they basically told me was that the X-Stomp is an out-of-date product whose processing power is not sufficient to process the model they have uploaded. Which apparently, according to the users on other devices, is a very good model indeed, and I have no reason to doubt that. And that reminded me that actually this creating of all the great classic rock sounds, and they are all the great classic rock sounds, and still the players who are growing up today, they listen to the same players for their North Star as I do, as Ramon does. I mean, not exactly the same players, somebody might say Beck rather than Clapton, but it's the same kind of people. Joe Walsh, Don Felder, everybody. You know, and all those sounds were made with guitars into amplifiers, into tube amplifiers. If you pick up a 1958 Tweed Deluxe amp, not only will you be holding a very valuable thing and a classic, but also you're going to be holding an amp that sounds exactly the same or arguably a little bit better than it did in 1958, than it did in 1961, 65, 67, 74, 85. It's the same product. It's the same sound. There's absolutely no obsolescence. In fact, all there is, is appreciation. The problem you've got with these digital devices, it's like buying computers. The computers are getting better, that's brilliant, but it does mean you've got to shell out a ton of money, quite frequently, on making sure the things are up to date. And the reason you have to get them up to date is not to make the new metal sounds, but to make the cherished, valued sounds in the middle, which I submit to you, they still can't do properly. They don't have touch sensitivity, touch dynamics, they don't have that kind of wonderful way you can dig in and get an extra tone, an extra curl around the note. They're not too good at telling the difference between a Strat and a Tele and a Les Paul and a 335, all those things. 
So it's, I've suddenly been hit by the fact that actually I've been wasting an awful lot of my time and money for years on stuff that actually just doesn't do what I want it to do. And when I grumble about the fact that it doesn't do what I want it to do, I'm told, well, you know, you've got stuff that's out of date, it's all obsolescent now anyway. So the, the watch out from this video, which I've more or less got to the end of now, a bit of a rant, sorry, is if you're a guitar player and you're looking for these sounds, I mean, by all means, factor into the, the, your, your purchase consideration the kind of music you're playing, which may not be anything like what I'm looking for. Probably isn't. I'm getting old. You may want the convenience of carrying all these sounds around because you're in a covers band. I know, I've done that with the Axe FX. It's brilliant. But it won't be the best sound you can get. You may want to please the studio engineer or the front of house guys. Well, if you're a professional, you have to do that and you have to kiss some ass until you get big enough to turn up with your own gear and say, this is me, this is my sound, live with it. So I'm not trying to stop anybody doing anything. I'm just observing from my point of view. I've almost had a Damascene conversion as to I won't be wasting a lot more of my time with these digital thingies in future because it's not what I'm looking for and because for some time yet they won't be able to give me what I'm looking for. One day they will, but the processing power, to make a profit, these guys can't really afford to use the amount of processing they need to, even though the price of processing is dropping. The Axe FX, when it was first launched, boasted the fact that it had a hugely overspecified processor in it, which is why it was so good by the standards of the time. That's now been roundly dismissed as obsolete gear and has been succeeded by at least three, if not seven different iterations. Kemper are doing a better job because I think that their demands of their processor are less inside the machine. But nevertheless, there will come a time when we're all told that our blessed Kempers, 1,500 pounds, gone. In the meantime, I take you back to not so much a mythical 58 Fender Tweed Deluxe, but my own 64 uh, reissue Fender Deluxe Reverb, which cost me 400 quid, and which is gonna sound exactly the same as long as I look after it, until long after I'm dead. No obsolescence at all, and a fantastic sound, especially with a pedal or two in front of it. I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, thanks for all your feedback, and by the way, I hope I get the sound right on this video, because I know my last one was a bit pants. I'm learning how to do this recording and editing for myself, uh, including the fact that I'm appearing in front of you um, in front of a green screen, and hopefully, uh, it'll be a more interesting background when I've uh, edited this and put it up. But uh, best wishes to all of you. Thanks again for watching, uh, and do let me have your comments. Bye for now.